Hi, this is Jim with Unchained Crochet. Welcome back. Um, hopefully by now you have made both vertical sides of your sweater. This is the deep end where there is no sleeve and then my other side here I have my sleeve side and it's the more shallow end of the vertical uh, striping. So if you have not stabbed your eyes out yet, you'll notice when open, we have our side seams still open. This is the size of a, a lap gan with a neck hole. So, um, sorry about that, but I think that you'll appreciate it and it'll be worth it uh, when you wear it. Um, right now, at this stage, especially with this being my second one, um, it feels like a blankety. In fact, it's a blankety blank blank. <laughs> and I just want to get it done. I want to get done with this tutorial series so I can move on to my other ones. Um, I started the Larger Than Life uh, tutorial today for my, my friend Trish. Uh, she was wanting to make that. So I made that video today while she was here and she could go home and watch it over and over again as she needs to. So... And I have a, the giveaway shawl is in the dryer, and the dryer keeps beeping and going off and driving me nuts. So, uh, what needs to be done now? This is a one sleeve project. If you have not watched the spoiler video, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it is asymmetrical. I got some threads I need to cut off there. And um, I think I already disclosed that. When we started this so on your shallow side that is the side that your sleeve goes on so you have two options you can turn this inside out watch for your shoulder seam get make sure your your seams out on your shoulder and you can go ahead and stitch this up which is what I prefer to do because we want to make our sleeve and make our sleeve as long um, as the droopy side. So before you stitch anything up though, stop and try your garment on. I know mine's going to fit me because I'm using my first one. So this is a first time for you or maybe um, your first time, but try it on before you close this up. Um, see, get an idea of how long you're going to need your sleeve to be. I want to know like things you want to look for is um, where does this side, the shallow end, fall on your arm? Because it's kind of a drop shoulder. You know, try it on. Get an idea of how long you need that sleeve to be. And you'll also want to know your arm measurement. Uh, maybe look at your favorite sweater and how the arm of it fits you. And leave your opening as, you know, half of that arm opening of your favorite sweater. Uh, me, I just know that mine is usually... Um, 10 to 20 inches with a drop shoulder. That's how big I like mine. And I'm going to go off of my other sweater. So um, I am uh, going to start with the other side for now for myself. I'm going to show you how to close these seams up again. And I, I don't know what I've done with this. I've turned it wrong side out. I've got it all mixed up. I'm going to pause here and fix it because my thread's going through the neck and everything else. Okay, so I've got it straightened out. There was the um, beginning tail that was all tangled up in the neck. Uh, because of all my yanking, I had uh, pulled out a couple of blocks right here. This is the wide side. Now, if you remember, on the wide side, I did 18 vertical rows. Your number may be different, but my wide side, the deep side was about twice as tall as my shallow side. Uh, let me get let me get my drawing. Okay. So here is here are my notes. I did nine rows on my uh, vertical edge of the shallow side where the sleeve's going. And I did 18 rows on the vertical edge of my deep side where it just gets the cuff. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and close up the deep sides side seam all the way up to where my wrist is going to be. And um, I need to count that real quick. 
and see how many shells I left unworked or blocks. Okay, I believe I left 11 unworked. So we're just gonna review real quick how to close this up. I wanna make sure that my seam, my shoulder seam is on the, out, on the outside as I turn this and work up. I'll do a quick review of how to close up the seam and then I'm going to uh, pause it before starting the um, the sleeve side. You can go ahead and go straight into doing your cuff if you want to. I'm thinking about it honestly. So that's the row I ended on. I've got my right sides together because of my shoulder seam tells me that this is right side, right sides together. So I ended on that side. I'm just going to go over here and pick up this corner right there. And then go back through that single crochet I did right there. Make a slip stitch, chain two. Now I'm gonna go into these two peaks right here. Slip stitch, chain two. Go into two more peaks. They don't look like they're lining up, so I'm just gonna go into the single crochet and connect the next peak on the other because that's how it's lining up. It's looking offset and I don't care. Chain two after each slip stitch. So now I'm going to go into this. Let's go into this peak here. You want that give in your seam. You don't want it to. Um, now I got them lined up a little bit better. You don't want to um, have a tight seam. Since this is the side, I'm going to keep going into the single crochets as well. Single crochet to single crochet. Peak to peak. Whatever looks okay to you is fine. Going into two peaks. Now I'm going to go into this single crochet. If you're Chaining seems a bit too loose. Just do tighter chains or just do one. It's okay. The whole point of my channel is to get you stitching without patterns. So you are going to learn to use your intuition. You know, as women, I feel like so much of the time we have lost our women's intuition. You know, um, from lack of practice of following our intuition, our gut. You know, and now we are all pattern dependent and um, follow everything that everybody else does instead of uh, going by intuition. So I've learned some hard lessons in my life and that's really been one of them, to listen to my gut. And um, you know, it can cause you a lot of pain in your life to not listen to your women's intuition, just intuition in general, whether you're male or female. But um, I feel like women have this keen sense, and um, a lot of times we ignore it. Maybe maybe we meet someone who we think is going to treat us nice and good and everything, and we don't recognize that that person is actually a narcissist and going to be nasty to you. You know, there's a lot of narcissistic personalities out there, especially in the day and age we live in. You know, and you didn't, maybe you seen signs of it. I seen it in my ex-boyfriend. I didn't listen to my gut. I didn't listen to that intuition, you know, and see through um, that charming personality he put frontwards, you know, that he had shown me in the beginning. I didn't, I, that's all I wanted to see. All I wanted to see. And a narcissist know that. And uh, they will throw you for a loop. So, you know, you want your crochet to be enjoyable. Um, do your thing, but uh, my thing has been to break free of patterns 
and to listen to my gut. And I've learned to listen to my gut when I try things on. Like, I can tell when I put something on, not even looking in a mirror, if I like how I feel in it. You know, I can see the color, look down and see the color, and I know that I look good in it. I can just feel the shape on my body and be like, this is nice. I like this. You know, comfort, on the other hand, feeling comfort or discomfort, that's so automatic. We, You know, that's something that we never really forget unless you choose to be foolish and follow the same bad decision over and over again. You know, we learn from pain. That's a built-in process. So um, let's look back at how much I've joined together so far. See how that is a nice, you can see a little bit of a scallop to the seam. That's a nice seam for this project. The corners meet down here and the seam is going to look good. If you want to make yours a little tighter, that's fine. If you're using a contrasting color, um, and that bothers you, then find the color that matches your last vertical rows. I don't care. I really, really don't care. It doesn't bother me. It just kind of makes it add more style to see that, that little pop of contrast. It's not a huge contrast. I wouldn't want to start this seam with like the, the brighter orange. I think that that would look really, really silly. And this, I find, is the easiest way to do a seam, especially with this pattern, because it is offset. It is just to slip and chain. For straight edge seams, I like to do the mattress stitch, uh, which is in the wild cardigan, wild violets cardigan that I'm doing. Um, the first tutorial is coming up on that. I actually tried to record the first tutorial on my old phone and it, it got lost when I was trying to clean up my phone just to have space to make videos and the phone was going kaput on me. So I got this new phone and, um, I forgot that that video got lost and, um, went on to my second tutorial, which I have not uploaded yet. So, um, I've got to do the first one again first. Long story short. I wish that I had more memories of my mom crocheting. She's older now. She's got some, we believe, early dementia. She's been seeing the neuropsych for. And, um, I wish that I had seen my mom crochet more in my lifetime. Um, just to have that visual memory. I remember her working on a shell blanket. She has one that she never, uh, probably would, never will finish because she's lost interest. But uh, y'all can pray for my mama. She's probably the sweetest mom in the world, at least to us she is. She's been such a good mother. Led by example. And you know, when times got tough in our family, you know, my dad being an alcoholic and, a, you know, he was a Vietnam vet and had flashbacks sometimes and uh, faced drug and alcohol problems. Um, he tried to get help several times and, you know, it was, it was a struggle for mom to uh, keep balance in the family as best as she could. You know, and she was really, for so long, the glue that held our family together. Um, I always viewed her, I think, because of the family dynamics and mom and dad's relationship dynamics. Uh, for a long time growing up, I, I viewed her as the weak one. And um, as I got older, I started viewing my dad as the weak personality. And then, yeah, I realized, you know, hey, it takes two. And they kind of complemented each other that way. So, um, it's just how it was. Life is life. And they got through everything together in the end, you know. All right. So, I'm going to close mine up. To, I'm counting blocks. They're doubled right now. There's two together right here. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'm just going to go ahead, I may go ahead and go to 12, 
because my ribbing, your ribbing is going to bring that in just a bit. And that's about where my cuff falls right there. So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to stop just a second and grab a stitch marker. Okay, so recounting. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I'm leaving 12 blocks, kind of. I'm going to go into the middle of these blocks here, and there's that's going to make my 11th block as I, you know, go around. Because um, my width was 11 blocks around. Circumference, whatever you call it. It's late, forgive me. Just look at the video. Don't listen to the crazy woman so much. <laughs> so I'm going to stitch up to there. And again, this is the deep side. The deep end. We are in the deep end. Remember that show, The Twilight Zone? Oh, man. You're watching The Twilight Zone. It was always on reruns late at night when I was a teenager growing up. I seen one not that long ago, probably last year, had Charles Bronson in it. I didn't know Pro Charles Bronson was ever on the Twilight Show. That's so weird. And it was a spooky episode. I mean, spooky. I can't remember who the lady was that was in that episode, but he and she, I believe, were the last people on Earth, just the two of them. It reminded me of back in the day how we used to say, I wouldn't marry you if you were the last person on Earth. <laughs> Obviously, they're not the last person on Earth if you're still on Earth, too. So, maybe they don't want to marry you, dum-dum, did he? Okay, and I'm approaching. I'm going to go ahead and do this cuff. So, you'll see how to do the other cuff as well. I don't remember honestly which would, which I did first on my first uh, slip slop. I don't know if I did this cuff or did my sleeve first. I want to say it was this cuff because my goal in decreasing my sleeve was to make it match this. Okay, so I've made it into those two peaks of that one. And um, I'm going to pause here real quick and count my stitches around my cuff. I want to say it was 34, but I may be wrong. Okay, it was 36. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to start the double crochet ribbing cuff. And um, I made it about two and a half or two inches tall. I have to count my rows as we go. Let me see. One, two, three. See, so there's seven or eight rounds tall. So now we're going to work in the round on this cuff, and it's okay if you do the outside, um, work from the outside. If you want to turn and work from the inside, that's fine too. I suggest you keep going with this strand that you just joined the side with just for the ease of it. So I am going to chain two, and I'm going to count that as my first cuff stitch. And I'm just going to double crochet all the way around evenly try to get it to 36 because that's what fit me before it kind of evens itself out on these blocks on the single crochet you can kind of pull your stitch and make it a little taller and then on the chain two spaces make them a little shorter a little little tighter so see kind of levels the playing field but it all come out in the wash so I've got my chain that counts as one stitch. There's two, three, four, five on here so far. And if I am not 236, by the time I get around this, I'm going to do a, a decrease here or there to get it where I need it. So I'm, right now I'm going into every chain two space and every double crochet. And every single crochet. The chain two space, you're just treating it as one stitch. Get some more yarn off the turtle turtle. La 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 love my turtle. The turtle I'm using now is the one I stepped on the other day and broke his little front flipper. I don't know what you call them. They're not fins. It's a flipper. It's not an arm. It's kind of between a fin and an arm. 
So now he's got to go into the welder slash turtle hospital and get fixed up. Or I can bandage him up with some medical tape. I don't know what I'm going to do for my turtle. I might just put some, some, uh, I got band-aids for my big, huge box of band-aids for my laparoscopic surgery to my knee. I had two little holes that had stitches and, um, I got gobs of band-aids. So I may just make one big, long band-aid and bandage him up, put his fin back on him, his flipper. My aunt loved turtles. I miss her so much. Her name was Polly. Well, that was her nickname. We called her Polly. Her official name was Pearl. Isn't that a pretty name, Pearl? You don't hear that anymore. Pearl Jam. <laughs> I'm not even sure I can name one of their songs. Just not my type of music, I don't think. I have pretty eclectic tastes in music. I like instrumental, relaxing music. I like uh, Christian gospel music. Um, I especially love uh, church choir music, big choirs like Brooklyn Tabernacle, um, Kurt Franklin and New Nation. Things that just want to make you get up and shout for for the Lord. That's the kind of stuff I like to listen to. And I listen to K-Love on the radio. It is always uplifting. I, I mean, you every once in a while you hear somebody... Sorry, my nose is itching. Probably fiber. Every once in a while you'll hear somebody call in and, and they'll have a sad story. But they always have a testimony, it seems like. I have a tendency to tell, you know, when I'm talking to people, say, I like you, you're good people, or, you know, say to myself, you know, I don't know why so-and-so thinks this or that um, about me. I'm a good person, but, you know, we read in the, the New Testament, was it Paul or Peter, said there's uh, none good but God. You know, Jesus said, why callest thou me good? Um, there's none good but God. He's saying, you, you know who I am, right? That's what he's saying. This is looking really big. I may be doing a boo-boo. If I am, you're here for it too. But we can reduce this down as we need to. Right within the ribbing stitch. I will show you how. You know, that's one thing. I, I don't try to fix all my mistakes when I'm doing one in a video. Unless it's one that leads you to a mistake that's like hard to recover from or that you won't understand how to fix. Okay, this last space there, I'm not going to put a stitch. There's room for it. If you look right there, there's room for another stitch. But I'm not going to because this is ribbed and I already think I've probably got too many stitches. So I'm going to join this with a chain to the first chain two that I did for my double crochet. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to pull up a loop and tighten it down just a bit so I can count. It looks a little loose to me, but also, again, that's going to get drawn in. So I don't like to skip stitches all the way around because I feel like it would be very noticeable if you skipped a stitch or a space. I like to crochet evenly and then decrease so that it, you can't, the, the decreases are invisible. You know, it's not very noticeable. I'm not a perfectionist, but I feel like that is aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And it's late, and I'm trying to stimulate myself and using my e-cigarette. <laughs> so if you hear what sounds like a snake, just know that I am okay. Alright, from that first one where this slip knot is, or chain stitches, sticking up, we're going to count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Woo, it's really big. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Okay, so 
between here and here, those are all the decreases we have to make within pattern, within the pattern. If you want, don't want to do it that way, close up your hole a little bit more. But I'm going to do some decreasing evenly spaced visually around this cuff. So I'm going to need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven decreases to get this to 36. So we'll start off with a decrease within the pattern. I hate the word pattern. It's like a curse word to me. <laughs> just, just kidding. Some people love patterns and that's okay. I just like being free from them and designing my own thing. Now I don't have to dig and dive looking for it on the internet. So this is a one by one ribbing, meaning go front post, back post, front post, back post. Okay. No right side or wrong side to it. All right, we've got seven decreases to do, so let's go ahead and do one. I'm counting this one as a front post. I'm going to back post double crochet around these next two stitches, here and here. I'm combining those two. Now, I don't have a pin handy, so that's one decrease. I've got to remember my decreases. So we're going to front post double crochet one. And I might just like do these one stitch decreases every third or fourth stitch. That was one decrease, all right? We did a front post double, front post, back post, front post. And you're just going around one stitch unless you're making a decrease like I am. I'm gonna go back post around this one. Hold on. I'm having difficulties because the way I have to hold my arms on the desk so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Front post. Now, I'm, I've done three stitches between since that decrease. I'm going to go ahead and do one more. And now I'm going to do my second decrease but this time I'm due for a front post double so I'm going to double crochet those two together by going around both posts and do a double crochet that was a front post now I'm going to do a back post double front post back post front post and now I'm going to do a back post double D or double around two so it's a, it's a back post double crochet decrease that took two and put them together now we're going to do the front post again And now we're going to do the back. And the front. So we've done three decreases now. I've got four decreases left to do, so I'm kind of looking at what I've got left. I'm going to plant the next one about right here. Front post, back post, front post, back post, front post. Let's do two front posts together for the fourth decrease. I'm going to turn my work. Now we're going to do a back post.
We've got four decreases. I've got three left to do. I hate having to stop and pull off more yarn. I'm sorry. I apologize for that. I'm going to plant another back post double crochet decrease right here. Now I've got two left to go. Just continue on with your ribbing. I'm looking at that and I am hoping to God I didn't do half doubles. <laughs> Just to be honest, I may have, it doesn't quite look the same yet, but it's okay. It'll just, I'll get to the end of the cuff sooner. That's all. I don't care. You can choose to do yours in half double crochets if that's what you want to do. You can do anything with this because it's your sweater you're making. Now, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to back up just a little bit. I had two more decreases to do. So, I'm going to do one right here. Go right back to doing the one by one rib. Sorry, I keep getting off camera. Hold on, taking you for a ride. Okay. I am not the best at doing tutorial videos yet. That's a little loose for me. I don't like how that one looked. So really, I'm not even, I don't even care if I, I'm going to do, um, going to do this last two stitches right here into one. So I'm going through the back loops or through the back of the stitch back post. Okay. So I ended with a back post and where I began was a front post or what will be a front post, that beginning chain. So I'm just going to slip stitch to that beginning chain, do the same thing, chain two up. And you're going to stay, I'm going to flip this over so it's not all twisted on me. You're going to stay with that same pattern. So where you did front post doubles, you're going to do a front post double. Where you did back post doubles, you're going to do a back post double. Keep it lined up that way. So it kind of will have that accordion effect and be a nice ribbing for you. If you haven't watched my other videos, please do. There's so many stories, funny stories, even crochet stories that I have told that I want to retell sometimes, like right now, I want to talk about the first um, pattern I ever made up was going to be a hat for my daughter when I was pregnant. And as soon as I found out and got my ultrasound, found out she was a girl, I just was ready to make her a little hat and some booty. So I crocheted this hat, had cute two, two layer ruffle to it. I just made it up on my own. I didn't even know how to read any patterns. I had never done a pattern at that point. And see, I, I started my road on crochet designing, <laughs> except the hat did not fit her when she was, I, I knew it wasn't going to fit her because it looked so small, like it would not fit a human head. So I stuck it on the poodle and our poodle went running around the house and trying to get that hat off. She looked like, like a little circus dog. It's so hilarious. She just kept scratching at it, like take this stupid thing off of me. I crocheted a cute little hoodie. Um, 
with some yarn that was kind of like that Lion brand, soft as butter. And um, the yarn be Breed Deep made a little hoodie and it was like a, a burnt orange color um, for my dog Cooper. Uh, he was Jack Russell and Chihuahua mix. He was just so cute. And uh, he, he was kind of that rusty orangey brown color uh, and had some white spots. He was such a cute little dog, and he, in that hoodie, he just looked so sporty. He liked wearing the hoodie because, of course, he was a little dog. He was always getting cold, but he liked me putting it on. He would lay around the house with it on and go for walks with me with that on. I miss that dog. Now I have Bailey back. Uh... My ex-husband and I, we had a very amicable divorce, and um, but he had kept both dogs, and I didn't know he was keeping them for me, <laughs> and I kept missing the dogs, and I've had a couple dogs since then. They just, for one reason or another, I couldn't keep them, and uh, last year, I keep dropping this stitch. Pay attention, Jenny. Last year, uh, my ex didn't want the dogs anymore because he was moving. And my oldest was like, well, mom, you know, you never really wanted the dogs to begin with. You wanted the dogs. I was like, yeah, but, you know, I had no clue he didn't want them at all still, you know. And so he had kept the dogs for six years. <laughs> and I got them both back, but the older one, he was 13 or so. And he appeared to be having heart attacks that um, Memorial Weekend. Um, he had would just drop to the floor and cry. And he, he had just been treated for... Uh, what looked like pneumonia on the x-rays. Uh, he had some infiltrates. and So he got uh, antibiotics. I had taken him to the animal hospital and seemed to be getting better from that. He had had seizures for a really long time. And what started his seizure problem was I think he suffered a little brain damage one time. Um, I was giving chicken to him and our other dog who passed away. But it was years ago when... Uh, Reggie was still real little and um, I had a piece of chicken in one hand for him a piece of chicken in my other hand for Peyton our other dog and I was calling for Peyton and in the meantime I had my back turned he snatched his piece of chicken out of my hand and I turned around and he was on the floor flopping like a fish and I thought good grief you know I didn't know what was going on he was choking on it he was choking on the chicken now we're going to slip stitch to this beginning chain. Don't forget your beginning chain is counts as your stitch. So uh, I um I gave him the Heimlich maneuver a couple times and he coughed it out. But I think he got a little brain damage from that. And since then he had uh, after that he always has had a uh, little seizures. It seemed like um, so. He also had trouble with swallowing, like he would just get choked so easily, it seemed like. Um, probably had some little bit of brain damage, maybe to his brain stem. And um, so when I got him back, you know, he had a little bit of pneumonia, probably from aspirating a bit. And he was always drooling. Sweetest little dog. And when I worked uh, from home some doing some charting and stuff. Uh, I had stuck him in one of my bags I had made or wrapped him in a quilt and stuck him in a bag and put him on the desk next to me. And he was just so pitiful. But when he started having those uh, chest pains or whatever it was, he would just flop down on the floor and cry out really bad. It was so sad. But um, after three times of that in two days, and, of course, every place seemed closed, I took him to the animal hospital, and they said, yeah, he's, he's really bad off. And so I made the decision to get him put down. Hardest thing I've ever had to do, I think, was get him put down. But um, I just couldn't see him keep suffering with that. It was too sad. He was so cute. He would run, and his butt, the way his butt would run kind of sideways and his front legs he always had real straight and when he ran his front legs went like this 
and his belly kind of went side to side too. He didn't run like this. He ran like this. It probably was from his brain damage. I don't know. I love, love, love doing ribbing. I love the look of it. Um, I love the feel of it. I like the chunkiness, the chunky feeling it adds to the cuffs. Um, another good reason to do this cuff first before you do your sleeve is because you don't have that sleeve hanging down, twisting around and everything as you turn this project. You just grab a big wad of the fabric because you got plenty to work with here and just take it and toss it over as you go so you're not getting all twisted up. So you can make your cuff as, as deep, as tall as you want your cuff. Um, I'm just going to keep going with mine. I think I made my other one about, it looks like about two inches. So I've got about three or four more rows. Um, after that, go ahead and do your slip stitch at the end when you get it as tall as you want it. And go ahead and um, cut your, your thread. And then we will be starting the sleeve. So that is the end of this video. Um, the next one is going to be sewing up the other side and doing your sleeve in the round. Unless you want to leave it open, you can go back and forth if you want to stitch back and forth and straight. But I find the shaping in the sleeve is more unnoticeable. The decreases doing it in the round the way that I do. So... I'm going to stitch up my other side before I start my sleeve and then I'll just continue on just like I did continuing straight from stitching up, up the seam and going right into the sleeve. Alright, I'm going to pause this. You can finish making this as tall as you want it. I'm going to try it on real quick before I pause. Yep, yeah, works for me. Not too tight, not too loose. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of my cuff, and I've chained an extra one and pulled a, a loop through, a long loop. So I'm just going to make it long enough to bury that tail. Whew, that was a hard pull there. It's the beauty about the mandala. This yarn is actually mandala baby. I am on my fourth. This is my fourth um, cake of the mandala. Uh, actually, it's teacup, sorry. Mandala teacup. What I love about the teacup and the baby, uh, Mandala baby, is they have more flex of the other colors in each colorway. Uh, so it makes kind of a softer, um, kind of sprinkled look to it, softer transition. So that is together. Hopefully I won't get a nightmare and turn it what looks like right side out, find out it was inside out. <laughs> so I'm turning that side, right side out, and... Houston, we are a go. Uh, there's the shoulder seam right here. And then I've got my wide end here with my cuff. So I'm just going to put my arm through there real quick. And it fits quite nicely. Very cozy. Now, the sleeve side is a bit trickier. Um, go ahead and get ready for your sleeve side whenever you're ready to do that. And um, make sure that you've got it right sides together. Um, try it on again before you turn it right inside out. Try it on again and be sure that um, you're going to get your sleeve opening as wide as you want it. See, I have my first to rely on, uh, on how wide to make my seam, or my sleeve, sorry about that. And this is how wide I started out, right here. Not sure if we can get it all in, right there. So it is about 11 inches wide. So, um, and that fits me well. Um, so I'm going to, from my end, count up from my bottom 
how many blocks I went up and I'm going to match my seam on my next one. Uh, you don't have that ability, so I'm just going to go ahead and count that now. Um, if you're making the same size as I am, uh, I'm a, I'm about a 2x. Sometimes I like wearing a 3x, and this, is, again, has lots of positive ease. So if you are a smaller person, um, just keep in mind where your shoulder piece right here, when you try that short side on, after your vertical rows, where this is hitting, uh, is it on your shoulder? Is it off your shoulder? Mine was off my shoulder just a bit. So, um, you know, you don't want to make it as wide as the very top of your arm if it's coming off your shoulder. You want to measure and then figure your ease in as well. Um, you can make this, you know, gradually taper. Now, what I did is... I realized right around here that I wasn't going to make it in time to get to the width I needed for, for matching cuff to the other side. So I, um, I hyper decreased right here, I think. Um, so I do want to try to do that more of a gradual decrease when it gets up there. It doesn't bother me when I wear it. Nobody really notices it. But um, looking at it, you know, it looks kind of like a boot right there with that being the toe so I want to you know make that part more gradual so I need to increase more frequently um, probably mid-arm so I'm going to work out my little bit of math here for the arm but you can see you can, really can't see those decreases I decreased along there on the bottom edge of the sleeve and um, they're really not very noticeable at all. So doing this, sewing the side seam up first and then doing your sleeve in the round is going to keep you from having to turn and twist your project as much um, to have this sewn up. And also, it's going to make your, your decreases less noticeable. And I just think that it makes it easier all around because this is such a big weighty piece all together, you know, when it's flopping around on you on your lap. Um, I just think it's better to do it in the round. And you can see, you know, more imagine how wide you're making your armhole. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before and mark where I'm going to stop on that seam. Alright, so that, that part's going to be in the next tutorial.